New York has launched a new website to raise public awareness about a deadly drug that is making its way into good schools, suburbs, and homes across the state. It is not the same connotation that used to be a generation ago. I'm talking about heroin. And today, Governor Cuomo announced the launch of Combat Heroin. It's a website and it provides healthcare workers, parents, teens information about where to go for treatment, prevention, warning signs of the abuse. It also provides a list of treatment providers throughout the region. And as we have stated, um, countless times on this program, heroin abuse, it's got this misnomer. We used to think it was this back alley street drug, and it was a generation ago, but now you see the stuff everywhere. I've talked to every different stakeholder on this. I've talked to every level of it, from parents grieving for losing kids here, uh, parents who've lost or lost a spouse to the drug here, uh, survivors of it. I've talked to priests who buried three kids in a week in a suburban community. I've, I've talked to law enforcement about it. I've talked to lawmakers. The point that everybody says is it is out of control and it's getting worse. Now, um, as I said, all corners of society deal with this in the Rockland County Sheriff Louis Falco um, and New York State Police Investigator Joseph Bracara. They told us not long ago about one of the many challenges that they face on the job with this. And we started to see a swing probably in 2009 or 10 with the use of prescription drugs by young, young adults between the ages of 16 and 26. And when they could no longer afford to keep up with that habit of prescription drugs, which were anywhere between $30 and $90 a pill, they reverted down to a $5 and $10 bag of heroin, which has caused what we have today and the increase in the deaths and the overdoses that uh, are confront us, not only in uh, Rockland and Westchester, but yeah. the state and across the nation, I believe. And this must be borne out in what you're seeing now with investigations. We're seeing large-scale busts that are attached to this. And, I mean, I remember dealing with the Attorney uh, General's office the last few years. Their focus was on prescription drugs. And now I'm hearing from law enforcement all over the place. They're trying to play catch-up here with heroin, which we thought kind of the darkest days were in the 80s or 90s. And all of a sudden it's back with a vengeance in 2014. Just to give you a brief statistic of how much it's increased over the last couple of years, in 2012, New York State Police, along with other law enforce, local law enforcement agencies, seized over 40 pounds of heroin and made a little over 800 arrests. Last year, that number went up to 2,200 pounds of heroin seized and over 1,800 arrests. So just in a period of one year, that dramatic increase in seizures and arrests just goes to show you what we're facing at this time. And I'll show my ignorance. Has heroin always been this cheap an alternative? I, I've heard the distribution uh, channels have changed, that it's now coming up from Mexico instead of uh, maybe from other points. And as a result here, you're having a pure drug that's more affordable um, that's now flooding the streets. Is that an oversimplification, or is it more right than wrong? I think it's right on the money. Uh, the bottom line is not only is it cheaper, it's pure, as you said, but now what they're doing is they're not cutting it as much, and when they're cutting it, they're using this new fentanyl, which is having an adverse reaction, which is, in a lot of cases, is expediting and causing those deaths. I've heard um, that in certain cities, and I know in Ocean County in New Jersey, there's one PD that does it. I know in Quincy in Massachusetts, another. Police are actually carrying, am I going to say this right, a Narcone or, or Narcan. Narcan, where... It's gotten to the point where there are so many overdoses now, people are screaming to cops if they're carrying it because they're trying to revive people in broad daylight that might be overdosing or seizing someplace. Uh, is this conversations that are having in precinct houses, if you guys are going to start carrying this now too, is that prevalent a problem? The um, Narcan is, is carried by first responders, emergency medical technicians. We are on the process, New York State Police, of outfitting our state troopers with it because when they get called to an aided case where there is a possible heroin overdose, the Narcan basically can make the difference between life and death. What we're finding out also, a lot of overdoses are being unreported, not reported to authorities, is some of these heroin users actually have Narcan and they're reviving their fellow drug users. And we're trying to get to the bottom of where they are obtaining it. And also, we're trying to put it in the hands of responsible authorities, such as first responders and police officers, so that they can deal with an emergency such as an overdose. Give an idea, because I think to the general population, and I consider, when I thought of a heroin overdose, I thought of a junkie in a back alley. 
we're hearing that you're getting calls to high schools, to college campuses, um, that it's running the gamut here as to who the users are of this, which is making the problem I get even that much harder because you can't just put in a little box. I mean, that's how prevalent heroin's gotten. We've talked to a lot of our colleagues in Long Island. They've said the same thing, law enforcement. They said, you'd be shocked. Um, the people that we've had to, uh, you know, uh, had to mer do emergency reviving and how many people that have gone for overdoses to hospitals, let alone the fatalities, it does run the gamut, right? Well, it runs the gamut. You know, you know what's really surprising is most people are shocked when you, you hear that this person overdosed or this person died from it. They are, they're athletes. They're everyday right. people. It's not like you would picture from the 70s and 80s somebody in the back alley. They're starting by coming down off the prescription drugs, then they're starting by purchasing the heroin and snorting it up to, to shooting it. But, it, but it's your everyday kid, your everyday all-American kid. And it's not just boys, it's boys and girls. Boys and it, girls. it goes the whole gamut from people that are athletes to people that are in musicals uh, and doing shows in their high schools. It's just all over and you, you wanna say, you know, the upbringing is so good and you live in a, in a middle class or if you live in a lower class, it doesn't matter. It's hitting every aspect of our society, at least in Rockland. Uh, Buffalo is having a, a rash of them. There was over 30 deaths in the state of Pennsylvania for direct heroin overdoses. Uh, and it's a $170 million business, mm. okay, selling the Oxycontins and stuff. And then when these young men and young people can't get that high anymore, they crash right down to the heroin, and here we, we're picking up the pieces at that point. We're going to have much more, um, obviously, on what is an ongoing epidemic um, in the coming days, weeks, and months. All right, we come back. We will turn to the world of sports. The owner of the Ravens blasting an ESPN report, and also Hannah Storm. She's sounding off, and for a person who's been in the business for 30 years, her first real editorial, and she speaks what a lot of people thought, especially a lot of women thought, about conversations with their daughters after what they've seen the NFL do and not do in the last month or so. Stay with us.